Today I'm making this wine display case that displays three bottles and two glasses. The inside of the case is fitted with a custom shop made cradle to hold the glasses, while the case is made from walnut and accented with genuine mahogany from Elements Wood Imports. All right, so I already jointed and planed my board square, and uh, now I'm gonna rip it to its, uh, not its final width, but an eighth of an inch wider than I what I actually need. The width of the, the box, or the height of the box, is going to be uh, six and three quarters, but I want to take the lid and the bottom of the same piece, so I'm gonna add an eighth inch uh, between here for the thickness of the saw blade. So I'm gonna rip at uh, a six and seven eighths. All right, for the joinery of this box, I'm going to do box joints, but uh, I still want the grain to kind of flow around the box, kind of like if you were to do miter joints, so the grain just uh, folds around the edge. So I'm gonna lay this out for my side, my front, my side, and then this piece I cut off into this board already just when I was jointing and planing to make it easier, and this piece will wrap around to be the back. All right, so I got some bug damage here at this end, so I'm going to start a little ways in and then I'll uh, figure in my side. And I'm going to add about a quarter inch uh, to the length of the side to take up the width of the saw blade and also just to give me some room to square it all up. All right, I'm going to square this end off and cut off this uh, damaged area and then I'll uh, square up the other end down there and then I'm going to set up a stop to cut my side. So I'll cut this side, I'll flip the board around, cut the other side. And that'll leave me with the centerpiece for the front. I'll reset my stop and cut the front. And then uh, I'll cut the back at the same time as the front using that same stop. So by doing it this way, I'm guaranteeing that each side will be the exact same length and the front and back will be the exact same length, helping uh, ensure that the box will end up square when I'm done. Alright, so I reoriented my board so the grain flows all the way through and then uh, this guy will be the back, back and the grain will still pick this up on the, on the back side on one corner. Um, but this way I can lay out for my box joints and I'm going to use my cutoffs to do a test uh, cut to make sure they fit together nicely. Alright, so I'm going to set up the dado stack for the box joints. All right, I milled this guy down. All right, that should give me a good stop. All right, before I cut the actual work pieces, I'm using the scrap pieces left over from screwing up the lumber to dial in my settings. So I'm just doing some test cuts, making sure everything fits together nice and tight. And then once I'm happy with the fit, I will move on to cutting the actual work pieces. All right, this is a old clamping block. Uh, but basically, in theory, the clamp it presses on the fingers. It almost lines up with this one, but not quite. It's a little bit different. So before I take my uh, dado blade out, I'm going to make some new clamping blocks that will match this. So when I clamp, I'm putting pressure just on the fingers and not on the end grain. That way it will ensure that this gets pulled tight together. All 
All right, so I got two pieces of plywood uh, cut to size, just a little bit oversized when I actually need it. Once I get the veneer on it, I will uh, cut them to their final size. But this guy is for the tray that's gonna go inside the box. And then this is going to be for the bottom of the box. So then I have uh, resawed some veneer. So I'm gonna prep this veneer uh, and get it uh, glued to here. Got my vacuum bag out, ready to go. So let's get some veneer going. All right, I need to cut a couple of dados, one to accept the bottom panel and then one to accept the top panel. And I am going to set it up because uh, I don't want to blow through the finger. So ones on the long pieces need to be stop dados and the one on the short piece needs to uh, can just be a through dado. All right, so I have my router bit set up in here and then I'm just gonna use a spacer block and this uh, will space out the fit's about a quarter inch, or hopefully exactly a quarter inch, uh, away from the bit. So I'll just bring it up here to where it just starts to touch. So I can move it, but it doesn't, uh, I don't have to force it. And then I'll just tighten my fence down. All right. All right, so I've lined up the uh, divide in my fence with the center of the bit. And then I measured from that point over a start and stop point. So that way I can plunge down on my start point, about all the way over to my stop point and then lift up. Then that will create my stop dado on uh, the fronts and backs. All right, the rounded over area left by the router bit, I'm just gonna square it up with the chisel. All right, now for the top of the box, I'm going to use this slab. It is genuine mahogany given to me by the sponsor of this video, Elements Wood Imports. They are a small family owned business importing sustainably harvested exotic lumber from the island of St. Lucia. If you'd like to know more about them or the products they offer, I will have a link in the description below. All right, so for this being a top of the case, I want it to be pretty stable and not move around a lot. So this pith of the tree is gonna cause me some problems if I don't cut it out. So I need to cut it out for two reasons. One, I can't resaw something this wide on my bandsaw, and two, I wanna get rid of the pith. So I'm gonna cut about right here and then square up the sides and then glue it back together and that should give me a nice uh, top presentation.
pulled the top out of the clamps and now I'm going to uh, cut it to width. Then I'm gonna find the center and cut, uh, cut the ends off that way. All right, I saved this setup from doing the uh, sides of the case. So now I'm going to use this setup to route the groove and the lid. And since I'm using the exact same setup, they should slide together nicely. So uh, I've picked my favorite face and I'm gonna use my favorite face out so that way this will be on the inside of the box. All right, and to make sure I have the cleanest cut, so if there's any tear out on any of these corners, I'm going to uh, cut the end grain first and then cut the side grain so the side grain will clean up any kind of tear out on the end grain. So that's a nice little test fit. Now I'm going to create a uh, chamfer around the edge of this. All right, so for cutting the top bevel, I did the exact same thing as on the dados. I uh, cut the in grain first and then cut the side grain. All right, freshly milled mahogany is really light in color. Uh, so it takes a, quite a while for the sun to darken it up to a nice rich dark color. So I have a custom blend of water-based dye that I have mixed up here that I'm gonna use to uh, kind of catch this up and also it'll pop the grain and really make the grain stand out real nice. First, I'm gonna wet it down because one, it won't soak in as fast, so I'll be able to control how dark it gets. It gets. And then uh, two, it'll be less likely to streak because uh, I'll have more time to uh, work with it before it starts to dry as I wipe it off. Take a clean rag. All right, and just let that sit overnight. It gets a really nice color. All right, so when I use this clamping block, I wanna make sure that I'm getting pressure exactly on the fingers and not in this uh, ends here, cause that'll uh, screw it up and not allow it to clamp uh, very tight. So to keep that from happening, I'm going to round over these edges or just uh, do a quick chamfer on these edges. So that way all the pressure will be on the center of the finger. All right, and then I'm gonna cover each one with packing tape. So if any glue sticks out, squeezes out, uh, won't be gluing this to the, uh, the work piece, it'll be gluing it to the tape and it'll just pop right off the smooth, slick surface. So the back piece, I put uh, two dots of blue tape, one at the top, one at the bottom. So that way after it's assembled and we cut the lid off from the, the uh, base, I'll be able to very quickly uh, 
realign them without having to rematch the grain uh, if they get separated when I go to install the hinges. So this is just a marker to help me keep track of everything. All right, time to glue it up. And I just got to sand the fingers smooth and the glue off and uh, we'll be in business, ready to split the top from the bottom. All right, I'm going to raise the blade up to where it's just below the edge of the wood. So that way as I cut the lid off, it'll still stay intact until I'm ready to, but it won't be super thick uh, and not allow me just to easily break it loose. All right, now I'm going to adjust the fence so it cuts right on my, uh, my line here. I'm cutting in this extra wide dado, which is why we left that. All right, to prevent tear out and also it's uh, less stable standing up, I'm going to cut the ends first and then I'll flip it down and cut the sides. All right, so there should be just a little thin strip of wood in there. So I'm just gonna try to find the, the center of that. I did a pretty good job. There's a, some uh, a little bit of cleanup here, so I'm just gonna try to take a couple light passes just to clean that off. All right, so I just built a little tiny form here that is gonna sit against the box and then hold the lid flush, flush with the top here. And I'm going to use Brusso hardware hinges. So I bought their uh, hinge uh, mortising template. So I'm just going to line it up for the instructions. And then to keep this in line properly, I've milled a stick that's the same thickness as the spacer on the template to drop in there. So the template has a center line on it, so I'm just going to mark the center line on my workpiece. All right, I'm going to clamp this this way. That's going to help pinch it together, but just to make sure that uh, this doesn't move on me, I'm just going to put a couple of double stick uh, pieces of tape down just for a little extra insurance. clean is cut, I'm going to do a climb cut, so I'm going to go counterclockwise around the template. Right, 
I'm going to use a self-centering bit to uh, center out these holes. Drill, pre-drill for the holes. The screws. All right, so this particular hinge has this little catch that locks it at 90. So now I need to uh, mortise out for that uh, room for this guy to go. All right, so that's where we're at. Now to connect these two holes, I'm gonna use the router bit, uh, but I'm gonna set up a couple of stops to make sure I don't route past this edge or past this edge because I won't be able to see the uh, router bit through the collar. And I'm gonna use those two holes to find it, to find my start and stop locations and then I'll connect them together. All right, and then there's my slot. So I'll do the same thing uh, for this guy on this side. I'll find both holes, clamp my start and stop blocks according to each hole, and then route between the two. All right, so to make sure you don't strip out the uh, brass screws, uh, Brusso sends a steel screw. It's a little bit harder uh, to pre-thread the uh, holes. So I'm just gonna drive this in, and I'm gonna do it by hand, uh, not a power drill, just to make sure I don't have any problems. This guy's in there. There we go. All right, I milled down some thinner stock and this is going to be an inner liner that a tray is going to rest on. So there'll be a tray for them to write notes to each other on and lock the box up. All right, so now that I got this ledge in here, there's going to be a tray uh, that sits on this for them to uh, put their notes and things in. And so I'm gonna do the same thing now that I got the uh, miters set up, except this time I'm gonna make it a little bit loose so you don't have to drive that tray in there. It'll just drop in and pull out. So I'm gonna miter the corners of all these guys and uh, go from there. All right, I still have my uh, quarter inch router bit set up in the table from uh, cutting the dado for the bottom of the case. So I'm gonna use this same setting uh, to cut the uh, uh, dado for the bottom in the tray, except I'm gonna lower it down a little bit because this material's a little bit thinner. All right, we are off to a good start, but uh, apparently the bit broke, so uh, I think I'm gonna remake this piece and then just set a data stack up on the table saw and cut it back. All right, I got my piece remade from the router bit incident and uh, data stack set up in my, t in my uh, table saw with the fence set ready to go. So uh, take two, hopefully this time it'll work out well. All right, so I cut this uh, little bit of a gentle curve on this guy, and uh, it'll just sit on here. I'm gonna glue it down, so uh, just work as a handle to lift it out. So I pre-finished the panel. I'm just going to uh, sand down a center line so I get a, glue good, a good glue bond.
All right, so I got this uh, big piece of four by eight foam that I've already cut some off to do some test pieces. And this is what is going to hold the glasses and the bottle. So I've done a couple of uh, tests with some adhesive and things because it's going to be flocked. But uh, the glass is going to fit in there like this. And uh, then we'll flock it and we'll flock it with an appropriate adhesive that doesn't eat the foam. This is just your typical rigid insulation foam. All right, I want this to be a little bit thicker than what it uh, than what it is than what the foam comes as so I'm going to glue another piece of foam to it and then uh, resaw my final width at the bandsaw and then that seam is going to be inside the box hidden so you won't see that seam so and instead of using like a spray foam and risk melting this I'm just going to use double stick tape and since this is mainly just decorative that's going to hold glasses this double stick tape is is overkill to begin with. So this should work out just fine. Alright, so I got my final foam block after doing some test cuts. Hopefully this is all going to work out. It's going to be a two bit operation. I have my uh, bull nose bit to rough out the most material. Then I'll switch over to a detail bit to do the final couple of passes to really dial it in and clean it up and get all the details in there. All right, if you'd like to see my process on how I went about getting the exact shape of the glasses 3D modeled and into the CNC machine, I will have that video in my channel membership area. All right, we're getting down to the end here. I just need to uh, flock this. So I'm gonna paint on this uh, green paint and then I have this already loaded up, ready to go. And we'll, uh, we'll flock this thing. All right, so this has been drying overnight and it's pretty much mostly dry. It says that it takes up to 72 hours, but I'm going to uh, basically gently tap off the excess. It says you can gently vacuum it, but I think I'm going to use uh, just the air from the exhaust of the vacuum just to blow off the excess. All right, so let's get this thing put together now that it's all finished. This is a pretty good tight friction fit, so I'm not gonna glue it in, I'm just gonna slide it in here. And... All right, so this guy I am going to glue in. All right, so when I slide this in, if I put glue on this, it's just gonna smear glue on the sides that I don't want it to get on. So. I'm going to uh, tape it off and apply the glue to the box itself and then slide this in there. I need to break the finish so the glue sticks well. 